So we have approximately 90 long bones in our bodies. The most common ones you probably already know about, which are the femur, tibia, and the fibula in the lower extremities. And then we have the humerus, radius, and nola in the upper extremities. A lot of our bones, even the very small ones, are also considered long bones, such as our phalanges, aka the fingers. But anyway, as with any bone, they can get fractured. And in this video, I wanted to go through the different types of long bone fractures, how they're characterized, what usually leads to this kind of fracture, and how they compare with one another. I'll show you different radiographic examples alongside some drawings, which will hopefully mean that by the end of this video, you'll be an expert in long bone fractures. All right, let's go. So the different types of long bone fractures are as follows. We have the transverse, linear, oblique, spiral, green stick, and comminuted fractures. And these are quite good because for the most part, the name kind of already describes the fracture type. But anyway, let's start off with the transverse fracture. The word transverse is referring to one of the three different anatomical planes that are usually called axial, but sometimes also called horizontal or transverse plane. But basically describing a cut that divides the anatomy into superior and inferior parts. Superior being above or over something, and inferior meaning down or below something. So basically a transverse fracture is characterized by a transverse line through the bone. And so here's an example of a transverse fracture where the patient had a football injury, and you can see the line is going right through the distal half of the tibia. In this case, it's actually minimally displaced which you can tell by looking at the AP. But it's not displaced anteriorly or posteriorly, that means either front or back, because you can tell by looking at the lateral as it hasn't really moved and it's quite in line. Now how do I know it's displaced laterally? Well the tibia is always medial with respect to the fibula, and on the AP you can see it's actually going towards the fibula, which is towards the lateral or outer side of the leg. Remember dislocations or displacements, it's always describing the distal fragment with respect to the proximal fragment. By the way, I have all these references for all these images down in the video description below. Then there's a the linear fracture, which refers to a fracture that goes along the length of the bone in a linear straight manner. I honestly haven't seen any fractures like this. I'm sure they exist and occur, I just haven't come across any. So they're quite rare. And I couldn't really find any examples online, so there's that. Then we have oblique fractures, which they can be displaced or non-displaced, aka the bone fragment has either been moved or not moved from its original place, respectively. The fracture line, instead of going right through the shaft of the bone, is going sideways, which is really what oblique means. That is neither parallel or in right angles to a specified or implied line, but rather slanted. If it's non-displaced, this is where the fracture is going from, let's say, the distal part across the center and then to a proximal part of the bone and vice versa. If it's displaced, then it's moved from its original position, then you can see some gap in between the bone fragments. So here's an example of an oblique fracture, again looking at the tibia. Now it looks like the patient has some kind of half cast or brace on on their left tib fib, aka the tibia and fibula x-rays. Can you find it? It's actually quite difficult when you're looking at the AP. So let me show you on the lateral. Ah, see, now it's quite obvious. The oblique fracture goes through around the middle, but rather the distal portion of the lower leg again. And with hindsight, which makes things 2020, you can identify it now on the AP as well. So this patient just presented with trauma, not sure exactly the mechanism of injury, but you can clearly see the oblique fracture, which we said is earlier characterized by an oblique or slanted line through the shaft of the long bone. In this case, there are actually some posterior displacement, meaning it's moved backwards. By the way, anytime we're describing a displacement or dislocation, it's always usually describing the position of the distal fragment with respect to the proximal fragment. And so in this case, we can see that the distal part, aka the part that connects to the ankle joint, has been mildly displaced or moved posteriorly or backwards with respect to the upper proximal part of the lower leg. And of course, this is the back of the leg and this is the front of the leg, you know, because we're looking at a lateral projection, but we're looking at it from the side. And here's another example of an oblique fracture. This one's a lot more obvious, both on the AP and the lateral projections. This patient presented with pain following a football injury, and they're unstable to weight bear, which means that they can't really stand or bear weight on their leg. And you can see here that the oblique fracture is only very mildly displaced, and you could say laterally and anteriorly. By the way, you can tell this patient is quite young, possibly in their young teens, but how can you tell? Well, because the growth plates are visible on both the proximal tip fib near the knee and also in the distal end towards the ankle joint. Next up are spiral fractures, which can actually look quite similar to oblique fractures, depending on how badly it's fractured. And so the, as the name suggests, they occur when the long bone has broken with a twisting motion and the fracture ends up looking like a spiral staircase, if you will. These, of course, can be caused by falls and accidents, but also in sporting injuries, in particular like in football, where you may be tackled in a way that your bones are twisted with a lot of force. 
And so here's an example of a spiral fracture, actually in both the tibia and fibula, that's mildly displaced, mostly visible on the AP view. And you can tell intuitively that it looks similar, but different to an oblique fracture. That the borders around the fracture aren't in a straight oblique line, but rather go around in a spiral or a circle, just as a spiral staircase would. So this patient has presented after falling down from the bus and twisting his right foot that morning and upon examination there was some deformity, swelling and severe bone tenderness in his right lower leg. And so the x-rays were taken and they found quite a prominent spiral fracture as we talked about. So in these situations the patient usually goes to surgery right away and for your interest they also provided the x-rays post-surgery or post-internal fixation as they say and here's what it looked like. You can see a long intermedullary nail along the shaft of the tibia, multiple screws to keep everything in, in alignment, and also some skin staples which are used to close incisions after surgery. And this grey mottled appearance around the leg is just a cast. Pretty cool, right? We also have green stick fractures which are quite common, particularly in the forearm of paediatric patients. As they may be playing in the playground, they fall down, their forearm takes the hit. And so these fractures, as the name suggests, they look like a green stick if you were to try and break them. The bend in the bone causes a fracture that doesn't really go through all the way or break in multiple pieces. So here's an example of a green stick fracture. Can you see where it is? We're looking here at the forearm of a pediatric patient after some trauma. And again, I know the patient is quite young just by looking at their bone structure and size and the growth plates which show the bones are still growing. Anyway, we have the AP and the lateral and the affected bone here is the radius. The fracture is visible on both projections, but the green stick fracture effect is mostly visible on the lateral. See the similarities with the green stick now? This one's a pretty subtle case, although there are cases that are a lot more subtle than this. Now here's an example of a green stick fracture that's a bit more obvious and severe, still on a pediatric patient. Their clinical history was that they fell on an outstretched hand, or fouche for short, and resulted in this injury. So it's looking at the middle of the forearm, this time affecting both the radius and ulna, again seeing that classic green stick fracture look where the break is only on one side. And this one's very visible both on the AP and the lateral projections. And lastly, there are comminuted fractures, which by definition refer to any fracture that has broken in at least two places. And as you can imagine, they're caused by pretty severe accidents like in a motor vehicle accident, an MVA. Now these occur really in any bone, but particularly in long bones, which is what we're talking about. So here's an example of a comminuted fracture of the humerus, and you can tell just by looking at it that it's a pretty traumatic fracture. We have the AP and their best attempt at the lateral, which by the way, it should the lateral looks like it should be flipped, but you know we're not going to worry about that now. And you can see that indeed there has been broken into two different areas at least, with slight displacement of the fragments. And here's another example of a common uter fracture, again of the humerus, but this time the right side. The patient just presented with trauma, and you can see that the trauma was quite severe. We have multiple bone fragments here along the shaft of the humerus, with most of the bone fragments being mildly displaced. Alright, that's it for this short explainer. Hopefully that all made sense. And as you can see that most of these had a different radiographic appearance, even though their mechanisms of injury may have been quite similar, just probably differing in their intensity. Again, these fractures can occur in really any long bone around the body, but we just looked at the common areas of injury. If you got any value out of this video, then share it with someone that you think will find it useful and if you have any suggestions for another video, comment them down below. I'll see what I can do. All right, see you in the next one. Stay curious.